Anyone can make their voice recording quite better using the free software Audacity. The method I will show is a must-follow guide for beginners. Advanced users also use it as a starting point. I will explain every step in detail. The steps are also available in this PDF guide with screenshots. You can get this PDF file in your email for free. Please check the last link in the description to get this sound better PDF guide. If your audio does not sound good after this process, it means either your recording setup needs to be corrected, or you need to record your audio properly. Before digging into the details of such issues, apply this method to your recording. You will get an amazing result if your recording has the quality or you will know how much better your sound can be. The process to get a better voice in Audacity is a series of simple steps, and I will show the steps in detail in this video. Our goal is to get an amazing voice recording after all the processing. Let's discuss some qualities of an amazing voice recording. The volume level is ideal, it is not too low or not too high, so comfortably listenable. There is no noticeable white noise or hissing noise. AC units, laptop fans or something vibrating nearby like a refrigerator can be the source of strong hissing noise. There is no disturbing background noise. Car honks, airplanes flying, other people talking in the background etc. are examples of such background noise. All parts of the audio can be heard comfortably. There are no sudden changes in the volume level. If some words are loud and others are too quiet to listen to, it is not good for the listening experience. Those may be desirable in a movie, but for voiceover, it has to be consistent. Your voice sounds smooth or crisp or clear. If recording space is not well treated, or a proper microphone is not used, the sound quality can be harsh. There is no disturbing room echo or reverb. Poor positioning of the microphone or a room with hard surfaces can introduce unbearable echo or reverb. Some of these can be achieved by editing in Audacity, and some of them require fixing in the recording setup or environment. If you can process your recording as good as possible in Audacity, you will have a good idea of the other issues. A properly processed audio can reveal some serious issues in the recording that is not possible to know otherwise. I will show you how to fix things with Audacity. The steps I am going to show are applicable for audiobook narration, voiceover, podcasts, or any other purpose. The steps are involved with these four audio effects. I will show the proper configuration in each step and explain why you should do it. The order of these effects matters a lot, especially at the beginning of your audio editing journey. Each effect also has to be configured properly. Otherwise, the audio will become worse instead of being better. The correct order of the effects will be like this. So four effects have to be applied in five steps. The normalize effect has to be applied at the start and at the end. If you are a beginner you should follow the order like this. Once you gain experience, you can rearrange the order after understanding what each effect does. Before getting into the details of each step, I will show you a quick and easy way to make the sound better. It is as easy as clicking a button. The waveform you see on the screen is a raw recording. I have not added any audio processing to it yet. I will make a duplicate of this original track. I am duplicating this to compare between the original and improved audio. I will improve the second track using the one-click solution. The single-click solution that I am going to show is developed from years of experience I have. I will select everything inside the second track and will go to Tools. If I go to Apply Macro, you will see some options like Clear Vocal or S Reduction. I also have Improve Overall Experience, Interview Improvement, and Podcast Specific Improvement, etc. I have a total of 11 different variations to tackle different scenarios. All these works on the raw recording. If I apply any of these, the audio will be improved instantly. Let's say I want a clear vocal improvement. The audio is improved almost instantly. Let's listen to the original and improved audio to compare. Why you should use Audacity? Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software. Why you should use Audacity? Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software available on Windows, Mac and Linux. It has the easiest user interface among the audio editing software. Even if you are a beginner, you can start using Audacity. So you see, what a difference was made in the listening experience just in a single click. You can make this type of single click solution on your own using the effects I show you next. Alternatively, you can get these solutions from me. These macros are available in my master editor shop. I will put all the links in the description and the pinned comment. I have got very positive reviews for the macros. Here is one comment from a user of these macros, I am a huge fan. I was skeptical at first to order the macros but I went ahead and did it less than an hour ago. I have installed them, applied one macro to each track on my podcast, and you have literally saved me well over an hour of work in one simple click. 
Please note that these macros are effective not only for podcasts but also for voiceover, audiobooks, and any generic voiceover. The installation process of these macros is very easy. The macro description page has a link to a detailed installation video, so I am skipping showing installation details. If you are interested in using these macros, you can check them from the macro description page. You can only get this macro pack or the Audacity Bundle. Audacity Bundle is a complete solution for learning and using Audacity effectively. The bundle includes several courses, the macro pack, and a custom EQ personalized to your voice at a discounted price. A professional build custom EQ can make a big difference in your audio. Audacity Bundle is quite unique as it includes personalized feedback. Instead of feeling confused and alone in your audio editing journey, you will find expert guidance all the way. The links are in the description. We will now see the steps in detail to improve a raw recording. I will manually add all the necessary effects on the track. According to this order, Normalize will be the first effect. Select everything inside the track and go to Normalize effect. Normalize is the first effect to apply because the raw audio recording volume is generally low. Normalize can increase the loudness which is better for editing. I will normalize to minus 3 dB peak. The minus 3 dB peak is standard on most of the audio platforms. Peak means the loudest audio point in your selection. I selected the whole track, so the peak will mean the loudest part of the entire waveform. The concept of the peak is important in audio editing. For example, if you want to submit your audio on some platform, they may have specific requirements on the peak level. I am setting the peak as minus 3 which is the standard value in ACX audiobooks. If you do not know about ACX audiobooks, do not worry. Minus 3 dB is a standard value in many places, and we will follow that for now. The volume level increases as we see the waveform become taller. Normalize may not always increase the loudness level. The volume level will decrease if the audio already has a higher peak than we set in the normalize settings. That is not a problem, and we should not worry about that at this moment. After applying normalize, you can see the noise has become visible in the silent parts. The next effect will be noise reduction. Noise reduction is an optional effect. Whether you should apply the noise reduction depends on two things, if there is audible hissing noise and what the accepted noise floor of the platform you are submitting the audio is. For simplicity, I will discuss only the audible hissing noise in this video. Audible hissing noise means you can hear some hissing noise in the talking parts. If you can hear some hissing noise in the talking parts, the noise reduction effect will reduce some of that. I will need a noise sample from anywhere in the waveform. A noise sample of around half a second or more is good enough. I will select such a sample from the beginning and go to the noise reduction effect. I am selecting the noise sample from the beginning, but it can be selected from any place in the waveform. Noise reduction is a two-step process. In step one, you have to give Audacity a noise sample or profile. Based on it, Audacity will detect noise and remove that noise from audio. In other words, Audacity will consider other parts of the audio as noise when it finds a match with this sample. Click on the Get Noise Profile button. For step two, you have to select a part of the audio from where you want to remove the noise. I want to remove noise from the whole track. I will select everything by double-clicking and go to the noise reduction effect again. Please keep in mind that Audacity can only remove white background noise or hissing noise. Other types of noise like traffic noise or dog barking cannot be removed using Audacity. We will now perform step 2 of the noise reduction process. You have to select the noise reduction settings. These three sliders let you do that. For best noise reduction, all these sliders should be at 6. Best noise reduction means noise will be removed without altering the audio quality. Too much noise reduction can introduce harshness in the audio. The top slider is the noise reduction amount. It should be between 6 to 12. 6 dB reduction is better, but if the noise is too loud, you can go up to 12. Please remember, noise reduction makes the sound harsh. Too much noise reduction makes the listening experience poor. I will set it to 12 for demo purposes, but keep in mind that 6 is the best setting on all three sliders. Make sure the reduce radio button is selected. Click OK to apply the noise reduction settings. The audio is now noise reduced. If we check the beginning part, you will see less noise in the meter. The third effect I will apply is the EQ. I will show you a basic EQ, but keep in mind that EQ is a very vast topic. A good EQ can make a voice sound smooth and clear. I suggest you watch some EQ videos on my channel once you gain some experience in audio editing. You will find the filter curve EQ inside EQ and filters. There are different types of EQ effects, and I will use the filter curve EQ as it is flexible to use. EQ is the process of manipulating volume by frequencies. That means you can increase or decrease the volume of some frequencies. 
Increasing the volume of frequencies is called a boost, and decreasing the volume is called a cut. Audacity offers some EQ presets in factory presets. I will use a modified version of low roll-off for speech. It is rolling off from 100 Hz. If you know about the fundamental frequency of human voice, it generally starts from 80 Hz, but not below that. So I will adjust the roll-off from 80 Hz. It means I am cutting off frequencies below 80 Hz where no human voice frequency exists. Audio recording can have some noise in those low frequencies, and this cutoff will reduce that noise. A complex EQ will take too much time to explain at this point, so I will apply this basic EQ. After EQ, the next effect is very important. It is the compressor effect that reduces the dynamic range. Dynamic range means the volume gap of loud and quiet sounds of your voice. If the dynamic range is too big, some parts of the recording may become very difficult to hear. The recording I am working with has no such big difference. Still applying the compressor effect will make the voice crunchy and crispy. A little bit of compression makes the recording smoother to listen to. Compressor configuration varies for each recording. I will show you a generic compressor with some guidelines. Please note that this is the new Audacity compressor introduced in Audacity 3.6. If you are using older Audacity, the compressor interface will be different. You also have to learn how to configure this new compressor. The configuration of the new compressor is totally different from the old compressor. I will get back to the default preset from the factory preset. You will notice now the factory preset has lots of presets. However, most of them are suited for music production. The compressor can be active or not active, based on the threshold value. You can see the graph has got a different slope from this point. This is the compressor activation point and the threshold decides this point. If I increase or decrease the threshold, you will notice the point will move around. Once you decide the activation point for the compressor by setting the threshold, you have to set how much compression do you want. That is set by the ratio. If I change the ratio, you will notice the slope of the line after the activation point changes. There are other configuration options in this compressor and all of them define how the compressor will work. At the beginning, it may be difficult to get everything right about the compressor. I would suggest using a factory preset as a starting point. From the factory preset, I will choose lead vocals. Please note that the actual compressor settings depend on the audio level and how the voiceover is performed. I am showing a generic solution. If you remember, I used normalize as the first audio effect. My peak is normalized to minus 3 dB, hence the lead vocals will work okay for me. If you follow this tutorial step by step, lead vocals preset will work for you too. I would recommend decreasing the ratio a bit. If you need a little amount of compression, you can set the ratio below 3. I want a moderate amount of compression, and I will set the ratio around 4. The purpose of the compressor is to control the RMS level. However, I am skipping such details in this video as it will become quite lengthy. Instead, you start with this type of setting, and to learn more take a course, or watch dedicated videos about compressors. I will keep the other settings as it is and I will apply these compression settings. The compression is done, and I will apply normalize again to adjust its peak level. Compression can alter the peak level than the standard minus 3 dB peak. Normalize to minus 3 dB will adjust the peak to the standard level. The editing is done, and let's listen to it. Audacity is a free audio recording and editing software, and I recommend to use Audacity as a uh, early software. I recommend using Audacity as the first software if you are in if you are new to audio editing and recording, I recommend using Audacity. Though Audacity may not be as stable as other paid audio editing software, but it is a good software to start with. So this was the process of making raw audio better in Audacity. If you think about meeting the guidelines of some platforms, you may have to use effects like loudness normalization. Things like that are taught in my Audacity course for beginners. If you want to get professional quality editing, I recommend you enroll in the course. Even if you do not need professional grade audio, but want to learn audio editing in an easy and step-by-step -step manner, this course will help. I will put the course link and macro pack link in the description. These macros not only make your sound better but also can help in your learning process a lot. If you analyze the macro, which effects are used, and in what configurations, you will fast track your learning. Thanks for watching this video, and see you next.